Now welcome to another edition of Battle of the Heroes and Villains, where this time we'll be taking a look at the results of the poll for Lando Calrissian and comparing him to all the other characters we've done thus far, before I then read and respond to some of your comments about him. But before we get to any and all of that, you can already nominate and or vote for which character we do next by heading down and responding to my pinned comment below with a character name, or giving a thumbs up if the one you'd like to see is already listed. Whichever comment gets the most thumbs up in the next 24 hours or so will be the winner and the subject of the next poll. That said, let's now get to the results for Lando, where we'll see that 26% of people gave him an A, 59% then thought he was a B-tier character, 14% then thought he deserved a C, which left 1% to give him a D, and a final 1% to give him an F. And so when we do all the math here and consider A a score of 5 and F a score of 1, Lando ends up with a score of 4.08, which puts him into 15th place overall. And I gotta say here, this one kinda surprised me. He finished quite a bit lower than I thought he would. I mean, no, I didn't think he'd crack the top 10, though I thought he'd be close to it at least. And being only a hundredth of a point ahead of Tarkin and four hundredths of a point ahead of Cad Bane does seem kinda low for Lando. Anyway here, let's get to the comments and see if we can figure out why this is the case, but before we do, let me once again say thank you to everyone who votes, comments, and watches the videos. It's all greatly appreciated. And now on to the top rated comment, which this time came to us from Suik V, I think that's how you say it, who said, Even if he's not as fleshed out as the other main characters of the originals, he is still very remarkable and beloved by the fans. And I do agree, I think he's absolutely one of the most beloved characters from the original trilogy, and I've always thought he was actually cooler than Han, but we can save that discussion or debate for another time. Though no, he isn't quite as fleshed out as Han or any of the big three, obviously. And I've always sort of placed him in that second tier or more supporting character tier of the heroes, where you have, again, the big three, Han, Luke, and Leia first, and then you have the likes of R2, 3PO, Chewie, and Lando after where they're obviously great and important characters and important to the story, but that they're not the focal point. Which is certainly okay and brings us to this comment from Zyman Rezepka who said, I'd say that Lando is a secondary character done right. He's got the presence, the charm, and the acting's top notch. His storyline in Empire Strikes Back is rather generic, but it's executed well. In Return of the Jedi, he adds that bit of pizzazz to the attack on the second Death Star. I liked the acting and the fact that Lando's back in Rise of Skywalker, but he, as well as most of the OT characters, was underused in the sequel trilogy. Lando serves his purpose as a character, the acting in the OT and the Rise of Skywalker is great, but the character just doesn't feel like an A tier 1, possibly because of the relatively short screen time dedicated to him. As I haven't seen Solo, I won't judge that story's take on younger Lando, that'd be unfair. And I'd have to say the awesome thing about Lando in the original trilogy is just how memorable he is despite showing up halfway through the second movie, where he does still have his own little mini story arc in that movie and that we can understand and even sympathize with the character despite initially betraying our heroes, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. And for me, that's the most impressive part about the character, and a lot of credit needs to go to Billy D. Williams, that he's not on screen much in Empire or, again, in Return of the Jedi, yet he makes the absolute most out of it and, again, is, to me and many others, I think, considered this more upper-tier character or upper-tier hero. Okay, and now we have this comment from Anthony Rinaldi who said, I love Lando and I think he is used to perfection in Empire. However, I voted B due to his stagnation as a character in Jedi. He went from having a full betrayal redemption arc in just half of Empire to just another rebel general, with no consequences of his actions in the prior film. And while I get that sort of the Star Wars way, that's just wasted potential. And I'm just going to pretend Rise of Skywalker just didn't happen. We also then have this comment from Kaiser Van Enrich who said, I rate him C. He is not a bad character, but he only was introduced in the second movie of the trilogy. He also pretty much only had character development in The Empire Strikes Back. In Return of the Jedi, pretty much nothing changes for him. By then, he is fully on board with the Rebel Alliance and just functions as the main point of view for the rebel effort in the space battle above the moon of Endor. Also here we have this comment from S.B. Keel who said, Lando is a lovable rogue in Empire Strikes Back, but he takes on an even more important role in Return of the Jedi, basically narrating the battle of Endor alongside Admiral Ackbar with dialogue and delivery so good, it's one of the most entertaining or even, in my opinion, 
the best space battles of any movie ever. My favorite Lando lines are, you aren't going to get another chance at this Admiral, Han will have that shield down, we've got to give him more time, and that's right, I said closer, engage those Star Destroyers at point blank range. We'll last longer than we will against that Death Star, and we might just take a few of them with us. When you hear those lines, aren't you just filled with excitement in your heart? Hopefully it's not just me, lol. If I ever saw Billy D. Williams in real life, I would say to him, Haha, you pirate, how you doing? Good to see ya. Okay, so first of all, no, it's not just you. I think for what it is, Lando is terrific in the Battle of Endor, and that the battle itself is still today the most visually impressive space battle I've ever seen. There's just something about using real ships or models of real ships that CGI cannot quite duplicate. And I do think you bring up a fantastic point, that he and Admiral Akbar basically narrate the battle or explain what's going on, but do it so well you don't even realize that's the main intent behind their lines or their interaction to tell you what's happening and why. But short of blowing up the Death Star with Wedge, which is of course huge, don't get me wrong, there isn't a whole lot to Lando the character in Return of the Jedi. Not that I think he's used poorly or anything, but they made so much of his little screen time in Empire, again giving him this little mini story arc that this almost feels wasted in comparison, or that they used him mainly because he was so great in Empire and that people undoubtedly wanted to see him again in the next movie. Alright, and moving on now we have this comment from Diamond360 who said, He's a smooth talker and an instant classic. His chemistry with Han, Leia, and Chewie in the OT feels so natural, and his betrayal and redemption feels so natural too. He wasn't doing it to be evil, he just wanted to protect his people, and when the Empire turned on him, he rebelled, plus he was played by Billy D. Williams, which is another big plus, an A for me. Then there's this comment from JD who said, Very charismatic, very charming, and does his job in the story perfectly. The betrayal in episode 5 hits hard and is pretty telling about his character. He is tricky and has no qualms about lying, but he betrayed Han for a very noble reason. He is a very complex character and one of my personal favorites. Also we have this one from GNB Man who said, Easy A. The dude was a traitor to his friend because he had an impossible choice to make, and then redeemed himself and then some. Great addition to the Star Wars universe. And what I find truly amazing about the character of Lando is that at first he does feel like this shady character mainly or probably because he's an old friend of Han who is a bit shady himself, but also because he does kind of admit he wasn't always quite so responsible. But he's also this character who is put in an absolutely impossible situation and yet still tries to do the right thing at every single turn. He doesn't betray Han for personal gain or just to get himself out of a jam as easily as possible. He does it for the sake of the people of Cloud City that he's responsible for. And it's only when the deal with Vader keeps going south or getting worse all the time that he realizes there's no winning or even dealing with the Empire and he does his best to try and save or do what is best for everyone. And I love that on the surface he seems like a shallow, smooth-talking scoundrel, but underneath there is truly a man of principles. Moving on now then, we have this comment from Presley Kraus who said, B. I wish we had more to flesh him out, but he's still great. He always steals the show when he's on screen. He's very similar to Han in that when we first meet him, we don't have his backstory, but we don't need it. His introduction tells us everything we need to know, and he was my favorite part of Solo by far. We also here have this comment from Lord Wife who said, Lando always felt like a whole person that we only saw for a small small part of his life. Anytime I watch The Empire Strikes Back, I feel like he has an entire movie that the main characters step into for a short time. I love that they don't spend a lot of time explaining him, he just is. It helps to make him feel organic, like he always was a part of this world, plus Billy D. Williams, so he's super charming and good looking. And I think you're really hitting on one of the keys and maybe the main key to the success of the original trilogy. That it feels like these characters, as well as the entire galaxy, has this rich and detailed story that we're just randomly stepping into at a certain point, and that we then just get to go along for the ride with them for a little while. And like I've said before, it doesn't matter how great of a story you have or how deep your lore is, if you don't very quickly grow to like and care about the main characters within it. And Lando, again, thanks in large part to the acting of Billy Dee Williams, is one of those characters that instantly captivates you. Just like Pon, Vader, and many of the others in the story, they nail the introduction and you're instantly hooked. Okay, and our next comment here comes to us from Abraham Schumann who said, People can debate on how he was used in Rise of Skywalker, but honestly, seeing him was one of the only parts of that movie I genuinely enjoyed. 
And the strange thing about Lando in the sequels is that Billy D. Williams was down for returning to the role from the very start, yet he's not in there until The Rise of Skywalker, where they kind of give him this bit part to play, where for some reason he, I don't know, just hunkers down on this planet for years after he and Luke fail to find the Wayfinder device. At least that's the impression the movie gives. And speaking of impressions the movie gives, at the end they sort of shoehorn in this idea that maybe Lando has a daughter, which sure is fine, wouldn't surprise me if Lando has a kid or two, but it's just this random thing tacked on at the end of the movie for the sake of telling this story elsewhere perhaps. And don't get me wrong here, I know Billy Dee is not a young man anymore, so it's not like there's a ton they could do with him in the trilogy, but the fact that he's not in the greatest of shape makes it all the more curious as to why they didn't try to get him in there sooner. I don't know, I wish I could say that the way Lando was handled in the sequels was one of the biggest disappointments of the sequels, but sadly it's just another thing on an already pretty long list. As for Lando in the movie Solo, which not a lot of people really commented on, and it seemed to be either people saying that Donald Glover did a really great job portraying the character, or that they hated what was said, mostly outside the movie, that Lando was uh, a lover of all things, including droids and whatever else he could apparently get his hands on. Anyway, I tend to agree that Donald Glover was a good Lando, and I wouldn't be opposed to seeing more of him elsewhere. And that, at least in the movie, it really isn't implied that Lando, again, loves droids and such in that way. In fact, when L3 complains at one point that something is wrong and that Lando is going to need to do that thing again to fix it, he seems less than thrilled about that idea. So I really think it might be one of those things that blew up outside the movie and wasn't intended within, that someone asked Jonathan Kasdan, one of the writers on Solo, if maybe Lando is pansexual, and he said yes because he felt obligated to say yes in this climate, which he shouldn't have to, it's okay to just be a heterosexual man, as it's okay to be gay or whatever else you might be, I'm a very, very firm believer in to each their own, or you do you, and what business is it of mine what you do in the bedroom. Anyway here, let's get to just a few final comments before wrapping this up, starting with this one from Aiden Bellinger who said, B because he has nice capes. Then there's this one from Anime Insect who said, he's the smooth talking cool guy we all know and love, and when he makes a mistake he does everything he can to fix it and redeem himself. He's the best friend we all want. Then this one from Bad Boy Orange who said, Not a minute on screen and this guy already seems cooler than Han, the coolest guy ever. That's pretty dang impressive. Then also we have this one from Cameron Blecker who said, Iconic character, doesn't have much real substance, but he brings a lot of life to the universe. We also had this one from Ellarad who said, He's long been my favorite OT character. Billy D. Williams is the absolute definition of cool. Then this one from Mac Tenz who said, Lando in the old EU was a beast. I really miss the old EU. Then this one from Marcus Jackson who said, I drunk tweeted Lando that he's awesome and we all love him. I know he's Billy D. Williams, of course. And he replied with a thank you. Really. Seriously though, the only thing missing from Lando is more time with him. A lovable rogue, a businessman, and an eventual war hero. What's not to like? Then this one from The Schmitty who said, I definitely think he's a great character, but needs more story. And finally here, this one from Darko Man who said, he's a B. The suave performance captures this side character well. So much charm on screen. Though he could have been fleshed out more, there was really no need to flesh him out more. He's a great secondary character. And honestly here, I think if they'd somehow given Lando another little mini arc in Return of the Jedi, not that I think he needed it as you said, or that the movie even had room for it unless you drastically change the first third of the film. Anyway, I think he'd then be considered a truly great character, or even a greater character, and that more people would have given him an A instead of a B. Also, some sort of story for him in the sequels would have been really nice to see, instead of just having him shoehorned in at the very end. Though again, it's not like the sequels didn't have other problems, so maybe it's not the biggest deal ever. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about Lando or what I or anyone else had to say about him here in this video. Either that or feel free to nominate and or vote for which character we do next. So leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.